Good evening and welcome back to the channel. My name is James and we're here to take a look at this image from the Spellbound Cave in New Zealand. I captured this image along with a group of other photographers and I've had a few questions about how I got this area fairly clean and clear and removed hot pixels and that's what I wanted to talk about this evening. So we're gonna do a little bit of processing on the image here in Lightroom, and then well, there's actually two images. Uh, there's a little bit of focus stack going on, so I need to blend those together. And then we'll go over to, into Photoshop and we'll work on the image to get rid of dust and scratches, um, to get rid of the hot pixels actually. We use the dust and scratches filter to get rid of hot pixels. Um, hot pixels are, like pure white, pure yellow. Um, if I switch this image and I take the exposure and I boost it way up, you can see the hot pixels. This is a hot pixel, hot pixel, hot pixel, hot pixel. Um, and those come from, it's just a natural part of a digital camera. Um, electrons, especially when the sensor gets hot from a long exposure or from uh, high ISO setting like 800 or higher. I know that sounds kind of low with modern digital cameras, but that still gets the sensor pretty hot. With the heat, then electrons like to kind of jump around in some of the wells on the sensor, and they will um, cause a pixel to light up even though there's no light hitting that pixel. So yeah, we want to remove those so that we get a nice clean image like this here. So here we go. So I've got these two images we're gonna work with. Um, this one here is focused on the foreground, meaning the ceiling up here, and this image here is, post, is focused more on the background. So let's work on this image. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna take my exposure up just a little bit. I want to bring out this rock ledge that I was perched on. Uh, a friend of mine took photos of me on this ledge from this little dock back here in this cave, and we'll explain a little more later, but in this cave, there's a river flowing through the cave and you get in a boat and a man takes you down the river and there's a dock at the top of the river and there's a dock at the bottom of the river and there's um, a cable that he uses to pull the boat along. I wanna be able to see this wall over here, this ledge that I was on. Whites are blown. Highlights are blown out, so let's take the whites and let's drop them all the way down, which is what it takes to be able to see the individual strings up here and the glow worms. Um, I'm gonna take the blacks and we're gonna raise them just a bit. Take the shadows and raise them just a tiny bit. And we're gonna take the highlights and we're actually gonna raise them just a tiny bit too. Because I wanna be able to see this rock texture as well as all these strings up here. Um, drop that down just a little bit, starting to blow highlights. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I want to add some texture in. I know that's going to add some noise, but we'll get rid of the noise here in a minute. But the texture will help bring out the individual strings, as well as some of the texture on the rocks and the texture in the reflections on the water. Clarity, I'm going to knock that down just a couple of points and add some vibrance. Vibrance is going to bring out these muted green and blues in the rocks up here, um, which is what Vibrance does, as opposed to hitting all the colors and just making them saturated, which is what saturation does. Tone curve is already done, that's mine. Uh, there's a few things that get done when I import my images. Um, I have a preset that sets lens corrections, does the calibration, sets the tone curve, does some detail for me. So I'm gonna leave that alone. We don't need the color mix or the color grading on this image. Detail, we'll come back to this because we've got to do some denoise. And then right now we're going to go to the transform tool. So I'm going to use um, the guided portion of the transform tool. And what that allows is I can drag a guide down in line with those glowworm strings on this side. Drag another one down, glowworm strings on this side. And then when I let go, it'll straighten up the image so that all of the strings are hanging straight up and down. Okay, got that fixed, and that's pretty much how I want the image to look. 
So now what I want to do is copy all of those settings over to this other image. So I'm going to highlight both images. I go to sync, check all, synchronize, and that'll move everything over. And so now when I click on this image, it's already done, it's processed. And this second image, which has got my glowworms in the back in focus, it's a little bluer for some reason. So I'm gonna go into the color mixer and I'm gonna look at the saturation of the blue and I'm gonna drop that saturation down. What I'm really looking at here is I'm looking at the two images on the bottom and I want them to match. Um, I'm not really looking up here at this, I'm not looking at this, I'm looking at these two because I wanna make sure that they match um, so that it blends together a little better. So now when I go back and forth, those blues match. Yeah, I think that's it for that. So now we'll go back to the first image, detail, denoise, and we will denoise this image. I'm not gonna do a lot, I'm gonna set it around 22, 23, something like that. Enhance that, and that's gonna take a little bit for it to do. While I'm waiting, I have a print of this shot, and I was thinking that I would do a giveaway to one of the subscribers to my channel. So if you like the content, subscribe to the channel, and here in a couple of weeks, I will um, randomly draw a name and ship that image out to anywhere in the world um, to one of the lucky viewers. All right. Denoise is done there, so let's go to the second image, denoise that, keep the denoise the same. Second image is finished, now I've got two DNGs and they're stacked. So if you ever see in Lightroom, if you ever see a little box up here that looks like pages with a number, if you click on that you'll see all of the image in that stack and then if you click on it again it'll restack them together. So what I want to do now, and what the top one is the one that Photoshop will work with. What I want to do now is, let's crop. Probably could have cropped earlier. But what I want to do, I want to come in here and I want to get rid of all of this white space. But I'm also going to get rid of a few of those glow worms over here, because they're right on the edge and a little messy. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get rid of these glow worms here, because they're right on the edge and they're a little messy. And then I want to get rid of this little nodule bump thing at the bottom. So a little out of focus and not super great. Okay, right. So there's that. Now I want to synchronize that. I probably could have done this already. Synchronize. Now we're going to take these two images and we are going to edit them in Photoshop so that we can merge them together. But I don't want to edit in Photoshop, I want to open as layers in Photoshop. If you click on edit in Photoshop, you're going to get the two files as two separate images. Whereas if you edit as layers, you're going to get one file, two images as layers. So here we see two images over here as two layers in the same file. I want to reorder these. I want this one on top. And what I'm going to do is put a mask on that, invert that mask, and then I want to paint in in white all of these areas where the glow worms are out of focus. So not very much. Just want to get those in focus. Yep, that looks good. And now what I want to do is make a stamp of all of that. So Control-Shift-Alt-E and now I have a layer here that's of everything below that I can work with. And then I'm going to copy that and I'm going to rename that to Dust and Scratches. Now what I want to do is we have all these hot pixels here is I'm going to take that Dust and Scratches layer and I'm going to go up here to Filter noise, dust and scratches. And then in the dust and scratches layer we've got 
two sliders. One is the radius, and it is looking at pixels. So hot pixels are generally one pixel in size. So if we go to a radius of two, where it's looking at that hot pixel plus one pixel around it, then it's gonna find those hot pixels and it's gonna delete them and put a different color in there that matches what's going around, what's going on around it. Threshold is basically the clarity of the image. So we want that number to be as high as possible that still doesn't show pixels. So radius of two, because we wanna get rid of the pixels that are hot, that are showing up white. And threshold, we want that number to be as high as possible that still doesn't reveal pixels. So if I bring it up pretty high, you can see it's starting to reveal some stuff. So I'm gonna drop that back down so that it gets rid of quite a bit of that. I think 30 looks pretty good. So we're gonna go with that. And so now we have a layer that's gotten rid of the pixels, the hot pixels, and we have a layer here that has all the hot pixels. The reason I'm doing this is because all of these glowworm strings up here look like scratches. So if I um, use dust and scratches on the whole image, then some of these strings go away, some of them reduce their intensity, right? So if I, you know, there they are, with dust and scratches done, without dust and scratches. So some of them are disappearing, some of them are minimizing in their size, and I don't want that to happen. So now what I wanna do is I want to add a layer, or a layer mask. I wanna invert that mask, and then I wanna come in here with a brush, and I want to paint white over all of this area that doesn't have all the glowworm strings. So I'm just gonna go back and forth and get rid of the hot pixels in the areas that I don't want them. If there are any hot pixels in the glowworm strings, they're really not gonna be noticeable. So I'll leave those alone. But all these hot pixels that are down here in the water, on this rock wall, I wanna get rid of those. But there are a few up here that are obvious, so I'll get rid of those. There's some right there right there, There's some right here, right in this little light area, some in this little light area right here. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So now that I've done that, what I wanna do is stamp a new layer. So now I've got a new layer that contains everything below that I can work with. And what I wanna do with that layer is I want to remove this cable that we see through here. And like I said, that cable is used by the boat driver to pull the boat through the river, through the cave, from the upper dock to the lower dock. And then I also want to get rid of this dock here. So uh, I'm going to go in and use the remove tool and start over here and let's just remove this cable. One little section at a time. I don't want to do too much at once because that can sometimes throw the AI off that's trying to do this. Now, there's this one little reflected glowworm in the water that I want to get rid of. I don't want that there. It's just out in the middle of nowhere and it's a bit of a distraction. And then there's a couple of glowworms here that I want to get rid of because they're just kind of random out in the middle of nowhere. There's a hot pixel right there, hot pixel there that managed to survive. And that is looking pretty good. Last thing, the dock. Let's get rid of the dock. Yeah, and I think that looks good. All right, so last thing to do. I always get rid of these layers because it just reduces the size of the file. Um, save that, and when I save that, it'll automatically send it back to Lightroom. So here we are in Lightroom. And there is our finished image. 
Thank you guys for watching. I hope that this has given you some insight into how you can get rid of hot pixels in your nighttime astrophotography, dark, long exposure photography, so that you can have cleaner, nicer looking images. Again, my name is James, and I do appreciate you watching. Again, if you are a subscriber, then you will be automatically entered into the drawing for an a print of this image and I will be sending that out anywhere in the world here in a couple of weeks I'll do that draw if you've enjoyed the content give it a like subscribe to the channel uh, you can support me through my website where there's a store where you can purchase images and then there's patreon as well thanks for watching have a good evening and we'll see you next time bye